The golden age of illustration happened simultaneously with the period we call modern art. While some artists were experimenting with ways to make themselves noticed by art patrons, other artists were seeking their art patrons within the established publishing avenues of the times. From 1850 to the 1920s, the publishing industry underwent great change. New invention to set type, produce inexpensive papers, and the refinement of printmaking, including color printing, made publications affordable and therefore accessible to greater and greater audiences. Until the 20th century, illustrative reproductions were still considered equal to original paintings and were shown in galleries side by side. Thomas Moran's landscape paintings showing the glories of the new America in the 19th century were sought after by art viewers and patrons and played a large part in securing for future generations the beauties of the West through the national park system. But his illustrative reproductions made it into the households and commonplaces throughout the country and beyond. Rather than relying upon the skill of the engraver to copy his landscapes, Moran drew his compositions directly onto the wood to be engraved. The original work was sacrificed, but the integrity of the prints was preserved. His illustrations in the vastly popular series of books about the American landscape became the forerunner to what we now call coffee table books. The popularity of printed materials for communication and entertainment and now the ability to print in color provided an abundant platform for artists at the time. Howard Pyle was a popular artist illustrator for young readers' adventure stories, but he was also a master teacher. Around him he gathered small groups of students in Wil Wilmington, Delaware. They later became known as the Brandywine School of Art and went on to define the illustration world of art. Many of the greatest artists of the 20th century traced their artistic lineage back to Howard Pyle. His students in turn taught their students, who in turn taught their students, and on into this century, with many artists still connected to the Pyle artistic legacy. Pyle's design compositions and use of color are some of the finest examples in history. One of Pyle's more notable students was N.C. Wyeth, who also illustrated many adventure stories, including The King Arthur Legends, Robin Hood, Treasure Island, Kidnapped, the Jules Verne stories, and many more. Pyle's son and grandson went on to make names for themselves in the art world, as did numerous other of his relatives. Wyeth was a prolific artist. Here are a few more pieces of his work. From this point on, I will only narrate occasionally. But take your time and enjoy each piece included here. I hope you are inspired to do your own research on these artists as well. This is the work of Harvey Dunn. Harvey Dunn studied with Pyle for two years. He was one of the eight artist correspondents sent to the front lines during World War I to illustrate scenes of battle for the government. When he returned, he became recognized for his paintings of the Midwest. He considered his greatest accomplishment, though, to be that of a teacher. Jesse Wilcox Smith studied with Howard Pyle and become, became one of the foremost women painters in her time. She illustrated many publication covers and children's stories. She is best known for her portrayal of women and children.
Violet Oakley was also a student of Pyle's and was the first woman artist in America to obtain a public mural commission. She spent 17 years creating a series of 43 murals for the Pennsylvania State Capitol Building. Rose O'Neill, a highly talented artist, was the creator of the Cupid doll, a public sensation that caused her to become the highest paid woman artist in the country during the Cupid doll craze. Frederick Remington specialized in portraying the American West. He was a likable character who would rather hunt and camp and enjoy himself. He made his first trip to Montana and obtained an art commission from a quick sketch he did on a piece of wrapping paper which he mailed back east to Harper's Weekly magazine. His first-hand knowledge of the American West secured for him success in his art career. J.C. Leyendecker created the Arrow Collar Man, an icon in the early 20th century that shaped the image of Hollywood and fashionable society alike. Alfonso Mucha was a Czech artist most often associated with a style of art called Art Nouveau. His distinctive style has been made a popularity comeback in recent years. His creative use of line and design is appealing and beautiful. Maxfield Parrish is considered the most sought-after and prolific painter in the 20th century and the highest paid artist for his time. He achieved an equivalent of movie star status during his career. His glowing color and sensitive compositions mixed with realism and often whimsical themes were loved by everyone. Another very beloved artist of his time was Norman Rockwell. He uplifted the spirits of America as it navigated through the Great Depression. His endearing paintings of everyday people still grace the coffee tables of many American family homes. Recently, in 2013, his painting, Saying Grace, sold at auction for $46 million, the highest price auctioned off for a piece of art to that date. Thomas Hart Benton settled in the Midwest and painted scenes of life around him. He is best recognized for his murals of rural life juxtaposed against growth and progress. He was Jackson Pollock's teacher, but was shunned by Pollock when Pollock became an overnight success through a government poster campaign.
Robert Peake is included in this slideshow to demonstrate the vast amount of art that was and is being created. His movie posters have graced movie theaters for decades. Who can say they have not seen his Star Wars movie posters? Some of the multitudes of artists that are not included in this slideshow but could and should be are three other students of Howard Pyle's, Elizabeth Shippen Green, Frank Schoonover, Ellen Pyle, other artist Howard Chandler Christie, C.M. Russell, Maud Towsey Fangle, Charles Dana Gibson, James Bama, and the list goes on and on.